YouTuber more from Ovid, guys. Happy New Year. Um, today, we're going to be going over a, a little project of turning a Intex Explorer kayak into a sailing kayak. If you notice from the, the video title, this didn't work out. <laughs> a lot of things did work out, but it I had a problem. One part broke, and then things didn't go as well as I'd hoped. I've got over 700 videos. been doing this for 11 years. I've never made a video of a fail. I don't think I've done one where things didn't work out, so I've made a video about it. But there's so many things that really did work out on this. I thought I'd go ahead and, and show you in case you want to do the same thing or, or make something similar. I'm going to be going over the design choices, what I made and why I made it, and then how I made it, and show you how you can make it too. And then we'll go over what worked with the kayak and what didn't work with the kayak, and what are the fixes I'm going to be implementing. Um, the, uh, also, at the end of the video, I have a couple of links to some people who have some channels on kayak sailing and small boat sailing and inflatable boat sailing that will be very helpful if you're interested in pursuing this and making your own kayaks into sailboats. I recommend them highly. But uh, let's get started. I, I purchased the Intex Explorer for, I think, $79 or now for $65 on Amazon, which is extraordinary value. It's only 10 feet long. It'll take two people, but for one person, you get a lot of room, and it's very well built. I, I'm, I'm really happy with it, and it lends itself into uh, doing a lot of experimentation with it. So this video is going to be about making it into a sailboat, but I also think you can put a platform on it and make it into a rowboat and, and adding little uh, electric outboard or, or trolling motors and make a little motorboat too. It, it's a fun little project for $65. Like I said, I wanted to build something that would cost a very small amount of money. Only $65 for the sailboat. I only wanted to spend like maybe $40 on the wood and the sail. So <laughs> that's a tall order. Um, I used the least expensive wood I could find, which is pine. And while I was using it, it was hard for me to do because I know that's not something you do in a marine environment. You don't use wood like this because it is brittle. It fractures. It splits easily. And... It's not the best thing. See, there's a big knot right here, and there's one up here. You don't want to see that in a mast ever. But the, during the whole process, I kept telling myself, there's only going to be about a 15 square feet on the sail. The boat only weighs like 20 or 30 pounds. It's only 10 feet long. How much power can the darn wind uh, put on the mast or the other piece of wood? Well, we're going to find out. <laughs> but the, the whole time I was making, I, I, you never use this type of wood in a boat. But I said, it's only 15 square feet, Bob. Come on, you know, you're not going to be in a hurricane. So uh, I, I used the least expensive material. Um, and I came up with this framework because there's no really good way to attach things to an inflatable boat. You ha you sort of have to attach something, then attach things to whatever you attach to the boat. So I built the frame. And I used steering oars, which I've used in the past. But then I made a departure from the usual method of using steer, steering oars, and I had a terrible time steering, which was the second problem I had. But we'll get into that in a minute. Um, this is another shot. This seat was made from two seat cushions that you you have to have by law when you go out on a boat, at least one. And so it, it comes with inflatable seats that I really didn't find that comfortable. So I made two seats by tying them together. And it was the most comfortable seat I've, I've been used in a long time. I was really surprised. One of the best things that worked on the boat. Also, it's supported by this back piece of wood, the frame, and in the bucket. We'll talk more about the buckets in a minute. So this seat turned out to be really well. That was one. Of the, at the end, we'll go over everything worked, what didn't work. But I just thought I'd mention that right now while we're looking at it. The, the lee board is right here. It keeps it from going from uh, losing... Uh, Go, going, when you're going to windward, it, it keeps the boat from sliding off to, to leeward. So um, you uh, you want that in the boat if you're going to try to go to, to the windward in it. This is a, uh, an inflatable boat. It doesn't have any chines. It's not flat bottom or V bottom, so there's no long lines that help it track. I left the skeg off. Um, you want a lee board or something to help you keep going uh, on a track going forward. Um, I use little carriage bolts, or excuse me, machine screws with bolts and washers in these four corners. This is where most of the the force is going to be, right here and right here, because this mast 
it's either going to go to port or starboard left or right or backwards or forward by the wind on the sails and that's going to be all transmitted to right here in these points and they did not break while I reinforced it it broke right here so uh, I but I, I know a way I can fix that but we'll go we'll, we'll, these buckets worked out great because the buckets they add flotation if the boat should turn over also a lot of storage and it keeps the frames from going forward and aft the frames are tied on a little carabiners some cord and then there's a cleat so you just wrap it around the frame and tie it off of the cleat and it's very very quick and functional and you can snug it up really quickly and simply it's one of the things that worked out really well and like I said the little notches for the steering oar worked out terrible because the oar kept coming out and I couldn't tell whether or not it was in the water or not and just the boat started going around in circles and then I went downwind for a while and the mast <laughs> came over <laughs> when this broke so uh, we'll go on some more this is a sailboat to let you guys know I've been messing around with this stuff for a long time years ago I made this I didn't have a rudder I just made it into a motor sailor and light winds to go upwind with the trolling motor and downwind with the sail and the the lee boards big giant Dutch lee boards and a milk crate <laughs> and a wooden floorboard um, however a few years ago I built this and it worked out pretty decent this is a two by two mast and I got the sail from James Luckett made my steering oar and they're locked in place they won't pop out so I, I know what I'm supposed to do I don't know why I didn't do it on the kayak and the 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 uh, lee boards worked out pretty good too they're attached permanently to this wood structure which was affixed to the floorboard uh, very simple design but there was a lot of very heavy and clumsy you felt like you were moving furniture and uh, it just the, the bad part was when you're laying in it you weren't sitting you were laying in it and it was bad for my back so I never did use it very often um, but it, it will work so this is where the boat broke the frame broke right here there was a notch and it split right there the little pieces of reinforcement it didn't break off at all there was a hole that was drilled here to attach the line that attaches the frame to the boat and I think that may have weakened it also earlier when I was reassembling the boat it wasn't on a floor where it's flat and level it was on the ground which was uneven and it was difficult to get the machine screws into the holes properly so I have a little hatchet and I was pounding on the screw forcing it through and that may have weakened the wood also so it's probably my not the design so much as, as my stupidity um, there's another you uh, you can see where it broke better on that side but I, but I know how to fix this. I know how to make it work. Um, I'm going to have a, a little plank or a board that will go over the cross, the top of this. And it'll be attached here. And it'll be a little notch or a, a latch down here. So this will be attached all the way up to here instead of just right here. It's, it, it'll be, it won't happen again. It'll, it'll be real easy to fix. This is the lee board. You can see the top here. This is the mount for the mast. Um, this is the f part forward facing the bow. I just used some uh, little round uh, clamps. The the metalware, the clamps and the nuts and the bolts and everything, cost more than the wood. I, I used very inexpensive wood, <laughs> which was a mistake. Um, well, actually, it wasn't a mistake. This is a prototype. I, I didn't know if it was going to work, so I wanted to um, use the least expensive material before uh, I find out if it would work or not. Also, I didn't paint it because, like I said, I didn't know if it was going to work. I sanded it and made all this clean so I didn't have a lot of splinters because this wood is super splintery. This worked extremely well. The This is f uh, foam pipe insulation. It protects the inflatable boat from uh, being chafed or braided from the wood. It worked out perfectly. I used some hot glue. I took a hot, or hot air gun and I heated the wood and then I put the glue on because the glue dry or stiffens very quickly because the wood was warm it didn't uh, get uh, hard as quick and I just press it on for a few minutes and once it was stuck it's permanent this this eye bolt here is a fair lead the the uh, halyard comes down that raises the yard on the mast and it goes through here and it comes aft 
to a little cleat. I don't know if you can see it here, the pen in this hole, that's where <laughs> when you deflate the boat, the other ones have the Boston air valve, so you can let the air out easily. But this one has the old-fashioned valve, so you have to put something in there to let the air come out. Um, you can see the m m mount for the mast. It has two large machine screws that come through the, the uh, two by three. And then I put some little blocks of wood on the bottom and top to keep it from going uh, left or right or port or starboard. And this is just a pine tongue and groove inexpensive very inexpensive wood I had on hand um, and this these are two by threes another view this is the cleat that you tie the rope or the cord off to attach the frame to the the uh, kayak and they're lettered a b c d to make it easier to reassemble <coughs> excuse me another cleat the wood you can see how easily it splits even though I drilled a large hole for this screw, the wood still splits. This is very cheap and expensive wood. You have to you you can you have to work with it. Um, another view of the slots and the foam insulation. This is a little carabiner that goes on the the D ring attachments. There's four attachments that come to. The, I was going to put D rings on the boat, and I decided to go ahead and use the ones that are there, and. I just put the little uh, metal carabiner and the cord goes through there twice and wrapped around the frame and then tied off to the cleat. It's very, very quick to take on and take off. This is a shot of the lee board. This is the width of a 2x3, which is a mistake. It should be a little bit wider, maybe by half an inch at least. But you can see I use once again the cheap uh, pine tongue and groove. It, uh, I didn't make a, a really good foil as you would have on a normal good sailboat, so this should be rounded off on the back. But on the front, I did sharpen it. This is just the side, you can see. On the actual wood that goes in the water, I, I put some uh, putty in there and, and sand it down so it's smooth. But on this part, it's not going to be in the water, so it's not uh, fixed. But you can see the leading edge of the, the lee board, I did sharpen it up so it will go through the water. The tongue and groove has a little bit of a, a, a bead, so it's easier to plane off because some of the wood is already it's sort of coming to a point anyway. Sometimes you can find fir wood that that is uh, shaped. It's fat on one end, and it's uh, fir siding, and it's sharp on the other. It makes a perfect little lee board, and it's very lightweight and very strong. It doesn't have a lot of knots in it like the pine. This is the hatchet that may have <laughs> broken my, my frame. But I'm glad I took it because the, like I said, the frame was not on a level surface like I was at home. So I found the, the little uh, machine screws were difficult to get through the, the holes I had drilled in the wood. So I used the hatchet. I find the hatchet, the little stainless steel hatchet comes in handy. I put it in the car and it's used for a lot of things. Uh, and the other things I used was a little uh, uh, nut driver and a uh, adjustable or ratchet screwdriver. You really do the best thing for this type of deal is you don't want to have to use screwdrivers and and ratchets and wrenches. You want just little maybe uh, butterfly uh, nuts, you you or a rope. You don't want things that are f fidgety and finicky, little nuts and bolts and washers and things that fall off in the water and you lose and so on. It's better to have things that either tie on or uh, that just clamp on or s there's toggle switches and so on. So. You want to try to get away from those in design. I also use my little $3 Harbor Freight ammo box that's water resistant to keep some stuff in there, my, my watch and my or my uh, wallet and all that stuff. I took my uh, wind speed indicator. The weather said it was only going to be about 10 knots in, in Fort Lauderdale that day. So I was expecting like 10 or 11 on the, on the little lake. But the lake, the wind was gusting when I went out in the middle where I blew my hat off so um, it was like three and four knots on shore so to blow your hat out, hat off I think it's going to be more than ten knots <laughs> uh, but uh, these are handy to have because after a while you can use it and then you can judge the wind speed yourself by by just the feel of, of, of the wind and looking at the, the reeds and the leaves and the water and so on it's handy. 
the, all the tools I used were very simple. I used a jigsaw, $20 Black & Decker jigsaw that I love to death, a little uh, electric drill, and a little hand plane. That's basically it. Well, you know, sandpaper, stuff like that. But it's, it's a, using wood, it's better to use aluminum, but it's extremely expensive aluminum, unless you live by a, a junkyard someplace you can get it cheap. But uh, the wood was super expensive, and it's fun to, I just enjoy working with wood. And if you don't have enough space, I only have a, a, a balcony in, in, a, in a front room in my, my one room bedroom apartment. So uh, you can do a lot with what you have, you'd be surprised. And it's just fun to work with wood. I, I, you know, you, the sanding, not so much, but, but the scraping and the planing, it's fun. Not sanding. <laughs> Nobody likes sanding. <laughs> you got to be crazy. The sail, I worry about the sail more than anything. And because I know the most important thing about a sailboat is a sail. If you have the right sail and it's cut well, you can sail a cardboard box uh, across a lake and back. <clears throat> I use the straightest, cheapest two by two I could find wood that has big old knots in it. Oh God, I couldn't get away from the knots. And uh, but I kept telling myself there's only about 12, 14 square feet, so it's not going to put a lot of force on this. I used two, a one by twos as the, the uh, boom and as the spar up here. I don't know if you call these a gaff in a lug rig. I think they just call them spars. And nice thing about having a floor that's on um, one square foot little tiles, you can <laughs> kind of use it to measure stuff, <laughs> your straight edges and so on. I never thought about it until I started working on it. And I laid it on the floor just trying to get an idea of the sail before I cut it. I've never seen anybody make a sail particularly like this way. Um, there's my, my boat up on the couch and my frame up on the coffee table and I put the mast on the floor to try to get an idea where it would fit on, on, uh, on the sail would fit on the mast and I think it worked out halfway decent. Now this is a close-up of the frame or not the, uh, the mast mount. You can see the mast here. I cut a slot in it so it would fit over this little piece of wood so when it comes down it will rest on here and it'll be locked in place. I don't kind of like this mast because if the boat ever turned over and this is kind of locked down, it's going to be hard to get the mast out. I would like to just have a round, something round, that I could slide the mast in and out easier in case I would ever turn over. And now, this is upside down. It should be the other way. I had to disassemble it there. This is the part that goes over the, 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 uh, the sides of the sailboat. Now, when you're building a boat that's inflatable boat, what's the first thing you think of? What is the best thing in the world to use when building something on an inflatable boat? Isn't it thumbtacks? Don't you think of thumbtacks when using an inflatable boat? Like, when <laughs> I couldn't stop laughing when I was building this sail. I, I'm using thumbtacks on an inflatable boat. Oh, God. So uh, I wanted to build something really quick and something that if it didn't work, I could just re, re, uh, refix it or re, reassemble it, rework it. And didn't want to use glue, didn't want to sew everything, and didn't want to use uh, grommets and so on. I just wanted something super quick. And the, the lug rig was, to me, the quickest. So that's what I went with. And I just attached the boom and the, the, this top spar with with uh, thumbtacks and put very heavy duty um, uh, duct tape. This cloth, it's a rubberized drop cloth. It, it's, it's kind of heavy. You definitely would not want to use anything heavier than this. I was kind of worried maybe it would be too heavy. But I think it's it's at the far end of, of being acceptable. But I would actually like something lighter. It's actually too heavy for me. But, but it did work. And if you were to make a larger sale, this material you can use rubber cement and make little seams and I've seen I think David Goodchild on his channel has built multiple sails using this material and been very happy with it but they were much larger sails and it's fairly inexpensive and it's water resistant and it works good with thumbtacks <laughs> I've not seen anybody do that before and there's probably a very good reason but that's what I did and I put the 
the duct tape on the top and the bottom. And the sides of the sail were already sewed, so I took advantage of that. This is, I think, four feet. One, two, three, four, yep. One, two, three, yep. I think so, about four feet. So that's the sail. I was worried that it was going to be too small, and I think it's too big. I'm going to put some uh, uh, points, some uh, reef points in the sail so I can uh, reduce it and take it out. When you're setting up your sail boat to see how the leeboard works and the rudder works, you don't want a lot of wind and, and a lot of sail area. You want something, the minimum amount to give you way on the boat so you can see how the rudder and the leeboard react and then you can fiddle around and adjust them. But if you're sailing hell's bells, if you're, the wind is really blowing your hat off, you can't do much adjustment or experimenting. You're, you're just trying to keep the boat upright. So uh, when you're when you're doing your sea trials, you don't want to go full speed until you get everything. Until at least you get your steering right, and it's not going to fall apart. So here it is, all together. All together now. Like I said, these these buckets out are they they worked out really well, and the the sail is raised by this little pulley here. It comes down through that eye uh, eye bolt, of which I use a fair lead, and it comes over here to a cleat. That way, I can reach over and lower the sail by just. And I'm doing that, and, and the, the yard comes down. So you do want to be careful, though, if for some reason, like when I lost my steering, with the lee board was down, the boat started weather vanning going around, or I should say the sail started going around. And a lug rig is good in one respect, that if you need to lower it in emergency, that, that yard is going to help it come down. But if for any reason, the yard should get wrapped around the mass once it'll bind up against your halyard so if you were to try to lower it it's not going to come down easy and it's going to be stuck up in the air you'd have to somehow unwind your sail and back it around which is could be a little tricky so like i was thinking earlier that maybe I, sh I could put some uh, some uh, uh, stays on the mast but then if the yard or the, the boom goes up against the stay and a strong wind comes, it could push the boat over. So it's better in a way if the boat has a sail that can wind vane to let off the pressure on the mast and the sail. But you pay as your money and you take your choices. You know, you, you there's, <laughs> there's something to be careful of everywhere you go. Um, like I said, this, these uh, steering oar things, the little brackets, the little, little uh, notches, they didn't work out for me at all. They kept coming out. Also, because the oar is round, it's not like a paddle that is flat on one side. When it was in the water, it was difficult for me to tell by feel if the blade was vertical in the water or horizontal. I couldn't tell the position of the blade in the water, and that wasn't helpful. So you should have something locked down in the water, preferably two, because I kept sw switching the oar from one side to another as I would tack. So. It, it didn't steer well at all, and it was my fault. I don't think it's the boat's fault or the design. It, if it was just locked in place there, snubbed it down, it would work out better. So that is the design of the of the Intex Explore inflatable kayak with my lug rig. I'm going to go over in a minute like all a list of all things that worked and all things that didn't work and what improvements I'm going to make. Um, this, this is where I launch like four knots out here. But out here, when you have a lake, sometimes when the wind comes over trees and buildings, it creates disturbances where you get puffs. But the wind was coming from the south this way, and there was a, a large break in the trees and the buildings on this side, and it was funneling through. So as I came over here, I just got hit by a really strong gust. My, my hat came, got knocked off, and then I was trying to tack back into it and I was losing my steering. Eventually I just tried to go downwind to go get my hat back and then with the wind on the sail from behind it just broke off at this place. So I was able to lower the sail and then I started paddling back even with the lee board down. That was something the lee board because there was pressure on it at home it would slide up and down but when it was in the water it would stick so I need to make that wider so it will go up and down. But but paddling back, I had the wind against me, and it was up against the mast, 
and also I was paddling through the water with the lee board and I was still able to paddle back. I was worried because the frame was kind of wide I wasn't able to get my oar, my paddle strokes in the water uh, because this was extended out kind of far but but it was able to do it. Um, it and I'm not the best kayak paddler. I'm not a kayak person, really, to be honest with you. I'm, I'm anxious to see if I can put a, a seat across the frame and put some oar locks in there and go rowing. <laughs> <laughs> and then put a little trolling motor on here and maybe a little uh, canopy thing to keep out of the rain and make it into a little motorboat that can go out in some rainy weather without a sail. So uh, I just, you can do a lot with this frame. I, I kind of like it. It's not that heavy. And once I can find a way where the bolts can go in easily and lock down with a butterfly nuts, it'll assemble rather, rather quickly, and the lines tie on rather and cleat off very quickly. So it it goes on fairly quick, um, and the seats are simple and pleasant to sit in. So uh, this life jacket, I think every life jacket that's sold at this color or or blue, it. They should they should sue those people. You should never buy a life jacket like that. I got it at the thrift store for a few dollars, but I'm going to get some paint and make it orange. If you go out in the water, you fill in. That's the same color as the water. Nobody's going to. I could tell you stories. I could tell you stories. Uh, so guys, I'm going to show you some resources. Some other people are out there sailing inflatable boats that know a lot more than I do. Then give you some help. Uh, this is James Luckett. He has a channel. Basically, he sells stuff. He sells boats. But you can learn a lot from his videos. In this one, it's how to sail with a steering oar. He gives a lot of good information about sailing with a steering oar. I've been sailing my whole life, but never with a steering oar. <laughs> just with just with uh, rudders and fillers and thumbtacks. <laughs> <But, laughs> uh, James Luckett, he has a lot of good information. And you can watch his videos and see how well the different boats sell, sail with a uh, with the rig he has. So he uses lee boards just like I'm using and steering oars. So uh, another uh, thing to watch is this channel, Lurch 1E. Uh, I think the reason I didn't put a, uh, a preventer on my steering oar is because I was watching too many of these videos. These guys sail the English Tuck Punt, which is one of the most fabulous, fun boats in the world. They don't have rudders. They don't have lee boards. They don't have bilge boards. They don't have keels. They don't have center boards. They just use paddles against a full pin on the the, uh, the side of the boat at the gunnel. So, uh, but they're very long, very narrow, and the flat bottom has a chine when they heel over. It makes like a little keel. So they track wonderfully. So you can basically use the position of the oar and your body weight to make the boat go to port and starboard or intact. It, it's an amazing little boat. So I was thinking, why can't I do that with my inflatable boat? So I think that's why I didn't attach my my rudder, my steering oar, because I thought, well, I wanted to try something like this. And of course I failed. Uh, an inflatable boat is like hard-boiled egg. This is like <laughs> sailing a train down the track. You know, so there's a big difference. But I recommend you go to Lurchy One. This is a wonderful s channel with watching these little boats sail with no rudder or 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 killer or or a centerboard or lee board. It's an amazing little boat. Uh, if I had a place to keep one, and if you have shallow water, um, they're excellent little boats. And uh, check out Lurchy's channel. Also check out. Uh, Jeff Jennings channel in Tasmania he's got an amazing amazing uh, channel that has a bunch of little sea kayak videos and you can learn a lot from his videos you see he goes out in the most dangerous waters in the world using these little sails and look how simple they are they just have a main sheet no other running rigging one main sheet the little lightweight few ounce sails was a little boom aluminum mass you, you you're close enough to them you can reach over with your hand and grab it and lift it out of the socket and lay it down this guy is selling too he's got a schooner he's got a schooner kayak I guess he, he launches this one by lifting it behind and putting it behind his back uh, but but you can learn a lot from watching these videos that Jeff Jenning has on his channel he doesn't have a lot of views or, or subscribers I think he needs a lot more he's got uh, now, not all of his videos are, are kayak, though. Um, 
in fact, he's just got a handful. But the ones that are, are just masterpieces. They're just amazing little videos on sea kayak sailing. Um, I'm just trying to sail on a little lake. <laughs> he's out in your Tasmania. <laughs> Jesus. So check out those channels. Don't forget, I have a playlist of boats that uh, you might be interested to. And I've got some other inflatable boat stuff on my channel you want to check out. So don't forget, I've got uh, a channel that I've been doing now for over 11 years. Got over 700 videos, a whole bunch of playlists, a whole bunch of people that I feature that I like a lot, that no relation to me, you ought to check out. And I'll be leaving in the video description a link to some of the playlists about boats that I have. And the people I just mentioned, I'll leave links to them too. If you have any questions at all about this design, don't hesitate to ask me and I'll try to answer as well as I can. And there's also quite a few people that have fishing kayak videos like Zoffinger and oh Marty and a bunch of people here in Florida have some cool like by Kayak Pete uh, have some really cool kayak videos too but they don't sail them. Uh, they will eventually <laughs> uh, if I have anything to do with it. So guys that's it for the video. I hope you uh, enjoy it. I'm sorry that it failed. I don't like to put up videos that didn't, what I've tried to make didn't work. And I don't normally do that. In fact, I think I've ever done it. But uh, I don't know how long it's going to be before I make these improvements to see if it works. So uh, I thought I'd, I'd put it up there for you guys in case you might want to try it out yourself. These little sailboats, they are only, they're only $65. You can get them. Guys, they're only $65. You can get them at Amazon. I'll leave a link. And you can do all sorts of things with them. They're a lot of fun. You can take two people. You can also add sails to them. You can add uh, little trolling motors. And I'm going to try to add a little uh, little uh, thing where I can row. So, guys, that's it. I'm, I'm, this video has gone along enough. Oh, no, wait. One last thing. I forgot. We need to go over real quick. I said I was going to do this. What worked and what didn't. The boat cushion seats, they worked amazing. Very comfortable. The lee boards partially worked. The sail, it, I thought it worked as far as I know. <laughs> but I only sailed till my hat came off. The halyard, uh, the, the rigging of it worked good. The frame reinforcement, nothing broke where I reinforced the wood. Uh, I knew how to fix it. So where, where it did break, it shouldn't break again. The air pump on this boat, it's actually fun to pump. I've never thought I'd say that, but... It's, it pumps up so quickly and so easily with this air pump. Um, it's one of the best things about this boat. The buckets are amazing. They, they, they serve so many purposes. I see everybody put, uh, put some milk crates in their kayaks. I think for inflatable boats, for kayaks, the buckets work better because if you're using a frame, they lock the frame in place. They provide, provide for flotation, and they also provide a, a wonderful support for your back. The attachment of the frame worked out so easily with the carabiner and the cord and the cleat. Dude, um, that was wondering how I was going to do that, and it will very quick take on and off. Also, the boat, it paddles against the wind fairly decently. I'm not an expert kayak person, and I was able to, to come in and against the wind. The pipe insulation, it's perfect. It was almost like it was made for it. It protected the, f the boat from the frame very well. I didn't show you the gooseneck and the boom. It uh, was very simple to make. It's just little two pieces of wood. It was uh, bolted on. Now, what didn't work? Well, the frame, it split. But it also split where I drilled a hole, so maybe that was part. And also, I had been banging on it with an axe earlier. So maybe it would have worked if I had done all that. But I knew how to fix it. I'll put a board across the top, and it should be fine. The steering wheel kept popping out and rendered my, my steering ineffective. And I was just going around in circles. I'm going to attach the oars in a fixed manner and create a handle position indicator. What that means is when the oars in the water, it's difficult to tell if it's vertical or horizontal. So I'm going to put something on the oar so I can tell if it's right side up or not. The lee board jammed. I just think I need to make it make it wider. The machine screws, they're very hard to insert and time consuming. Um, I think I'm just going to fix the wooden holes, make them larger and add washers, larger washers, butterfly nuts. I lost my hat in the gust. I just need to attach it. The skeg wasn't attached. I just need to put the boat in the water 
or maybe put the boat up on those buckets and add the the. Uh, I was worried about the keg, the skeg getting knocked off as I dragged across the grass, but I could have put the the boat up on the buckets, and then attach the skeg. By the way, those buckets are also wonderful to sit on when you're uh, pumping up the boat or working on it. The mast it's not easy to remove, and I, I could I think if I used a, a smaller aluminum mast, it would be better to slide it out. I don't like life jackets that color. I could I could fix that easily. So well, I think I already this is this is the things I'm going to actually do. I think we just talked about that. But I'm also going to add a cup holder, uh, add reef points to the sail, add a second steering oar. I'm going to add a rope from the bow to assist in steering, like a little bridle. bridle. I'm going to uh, add camera mounts, add grease to the leeboard, take a little luggage cart so it's easier to take the stuff back and forth in the car, add the skeg, and add a visible color to the life jacket. Okay, I think that's about it. So guys, that's it for Rob this week. Hope you're having a good new year. And uh, if you decide to make something like this, I hope these little pointers help you out. And hope to see you out there. And Happy New Year, everybody.